Hello, this is Bunting. And because Essex was in DMVU's comments feeling so left out after the last video, in this video, I'll be covering his style of sound design using Vital. Let's go. Right. Notice I didn't say arrangement because in this arrangement, I just wanted to show off all the sounds I cooked up rather than actually reflecting Essex style. But I'll get to his style of arrangement in the end, right? So right off, let's start off with the drums where I like to start all my tracks, right? But actually, I tricked you because before that, I'm self-plugging my SoundCloud, right? And I have a few songs released if you want to check them out and give me a follow. That would really help me out. And yeah, if you enjoy my videos, I'd really appreciate a follow on there. It would support me and you get to hear bangers, right? But I'm done self-promoing because now, drums. What's going on with drums? Pretty basic kind of dubstep -y style drums, which I just use these samples. These are my samples from my site, right? But as per BPM, right, 160 to 140 around there is where a lot of Essex stuff lies. Sometimes he's on the slower end of 140, but a lot of the time he's at that halftime kind of pace with the 160 and just more or less enjoy those BPMs, right? But right away, let's just get into the actual sounds, right? I'm gonna start off with a sound or a style of sound you hear a lot in his stuff. And that's this right here, right? But before that, let me freeze all these tracks so I stop lagging. Okay, all those tracks are frozen, so we're left with this one vital patch to dissect beautifully, right? What's interesting about Essex and this style of sound is that a lot of times people layer basses with their sub bass. But right here, this is more of a kind of lead sound, right? Which is super cool, if you ask me. So to make this, the basis is this detuned saw, right? But that doesn't sound very close, but it gives us a nice texture to then filter. And that's really the basis of your sound. And if you want to modulate this cutoff without dragging it around, that's what LFOs are for. It's the magic of LFOs. You can change the amount and how fast it's going. And you're set. You can shape the LFO, make it snappier. A lot of time, S6 uses these snappy LFOs, right? Which I kind of dig and might end up using more in my stuff. Now, let's say you wanted it to feel tighter, this LFO or this filter, right? Just turn it right here to 24 decibels and it's tighter, right? But it's almost too tight, which could be difficult because you only have 24 and 12 decibels. Where's the in-between, right? And these decibels is basically how steep the slope is, right? Long story short, if you go to EQ and click this, you can turn on this low pass filter, right? Which is basically in between 24 and 12. All right, and that's pretty much the basis of your sound. Sometimes he's a little simpler with it. Sometimes he layers it and affects it more, right? But what I did for this specific patch is I layered two more saw oscillators with it, right? This one, though, I turn up the unison voices a bit. And I think I put it in an octave below. And it's sounding fatter already. You can add another one and add it two octaves below. And also, octave is minus 12. You can hold shift and click to move it an octave at a time. Maybe turn up the bass on this. Right, I didn't turn up the unison for this because or else it loses a bit of that grit, which I'm kind of digging. But yeah, all together makes it a pretty fat, wubby type of sound. That plus a bit of compression, the tack up, makes it brighter if you can ignore my CPU dying, right? And the final touch, which a lot of his sounds have, he likes to use this, is chorus. It just adds this depth to it and this kind of stereo to it as well. For this chorus, I just use Ableton's chorus. I found this got closer than uh, Vital's chorus. And this is literally just the chorus preset for it. Right. And it sounds good to me. And I boost the highs on it. And you're set. You know, that's the sound. Now, what did I do for this patch? Basically, it's the same patch, right? Or you could probably tell it sounds very similar, right? Except I moved one of the voices, right? 
So in our other patch, right, we have this at zero. But if you turn it up to seven, that means seven, seven little half steps, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or whatever. That's a fifth, which is just an interval that sounds very good, and you can move around and play it anywhere, right? And that's a cool way to add some timbre variation. Even not to this patch, to any patch, you can usually move stuff up a seventh, and it will still sound good, just a little different, right? And if you want this exact preset I used in the video, right, you can go to my Patreon, link is in the description, and get all this, these presets as well as this project file and all my video presets in the project file. So that's that. Okay, so next up for sounds are these kind of sustained basses and their kind of variations. Stuff like that, right? So as you see, plenty of OTTs really make up the, the bulk of the sound, right? But in Vital, you'll be surprised to see there's basically nothing going on, right? Well, look, I have the initialized patch. All right, I turn on the second oscillator and move it up 12 just to give it that extra high end to really fill it up and, yeah, do all that, right? But where all this texture and interest comes from is actually just a bunch of OTTs. So if I add these in manually, you'll see, right? Not a huge difference, right? But when you turn the time down, it gives this like weird, almost lo-fi sound, which is really cool, and I've heard in a few of Essex tracks. You can just duplicate it to further fuck with the texture, or you can turn the time up, or have it in the middle, or any which position, to tweak the timbre, right? As a rule of thumb, right, the higher time is cleaner, lower time is dirtier, right? And yeah, that's that. I did add, however, some pitch bending through Vital, right, if I go right back in. And pitch bending is pretty important if you really want to add some movement and interest to your sounds, right? Using this pitch wheel, you can automate it in Ableton like that, make your wheel, wheel. And using this bend parameter, right? You can change how far it will bend in each direction. I like um, I like 12 because that's an octave. You move it up, down octave. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You get the idea. And yeah, some extra processing I added, however, was this hiss erosion preset. You hear this a lot in any kind of freeform bassy stuff. It adds this, yeah, hiss, noise hiss, which almost sounds like, I think the reason it sounds good, it almost sounds like a really fat sub when it's like blowing all that air. Yeah. Right. And I just add a tiny filter at the end, auto filter, to give it that fade out. Yeah, that's that, right? But you'll hear other sounds like this similar in his work. And for that, I would say just mess with different OTTs different uh, shapes, right? You can just do just a sine wave, right? Which I basically did in the beginning. And you could add all sorts of different filter movement, right? Just to show you how far it can go. Just with this basic premise, you know, get some basic shapes, slam it through OTT and some filtering and just set. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, now this right here, this bass right here, is actually pretty similar to these basses up here. And you'll see how, even though it can sound a bit different, it is actually quite similar, right? Let's go into Vital and you'll see the same kind of formula. These detuned saw waves, which Essex loves to use, right? Layered with, uh, don't need that. Layered with this, um filter okay geez give me a minute yeah and same kind of principle you know if we were to do it from scratch voices layer another one detuned uh, at 12 preferably <laughs> right obnoxious on the ears until you filter it and make it absolutely beautiful modulating that cut off make it so quick and snappy speaks for itself you can multiband compress it you can add a bit of chorus I like my chorus without uh, feedback and after filtering. Another thing is, in Vital, by default, it has a bit of release at the end to help prevent clicking. 
but you hear it kind of rings out one more time than I want it to. So a lot of the times I just turn that release all the way down. Okay, that's that plus a bit of extra chorus. Kind of helps it sound even deeper and wider, which is cool. And I basically duplicated that patch, right? Let me unfreeze this. Duplicated that patch and put it on a sub bass, right? Because you pretty much want to have most, if not all, of your sounds layer with a sub bass. I mean, it's up to you. You know, some people don't layer their stuff with a sub bass, but they have their sub bass doing their own thing. But just keep in mind, it's bass music. You need the sub, okay? Yeah, that's just a sub bass, a sine wave from basic shapes hitting as low as you can get it with the same envelope on the volume, right? And that's that, you know? Another quick tweak you can make, right, is instead of doing the filter or in addition to doing the filter, you can automate your volumes too. Very slightly messes with the kind of snappiness of it. Or you can have the volume without a filter, right, or both, and you know the deal. Also, you can make this 24, which I think was actually better. You can change the amount to. You know the deal, right? Just tweak these patches endlessly. They're a ton of fun to mess with and make them your own, right? This right here is basically just another saw wave, right? We're really staying in the box for this one with the basic shapes. Back to basics, but it slaps, so I'm not complaining. Just a saw wave, right, with multiband compression and a bit of chorus, right? This is, isn't really a sound I hear a lot in his stuff, but I know he likes basic shapes and chorus, so I threw it in there as a fill with auto filter opening up to give it some cool movement, right? Now these little melodics. This definitely doesn't reflect his arrangement, you know, because having as many like mid basses going on as this, I don't really hear a lot of kind of melodic slide with it. But I wanted to put in here nonetheless, right? Again, basic shapes, right? Except to make them shaped and beautiful, right? Just turn down to K sustain, make it plucky. You can add a bit of sustain and release too if you're into that. Really, and you can get a lot of different tones and interesting plucks just from messing with the envelope and the shapes. Right, but for this patch, exactly, just to case sustain release down. Uh, I think I put on a bit of reverb and a bit of filtering, right, for some movement. And what I did for the filter is I wanted it to move over time, so right now it's re-triggering for every new note that's playing. I don't want that, I want it to just sit and stay in the same spot across the board. Make it slow, and as you see, it's making it brighter and dimmer over time for some cool movement. Right? These principles are pretty basic for kind of uh, like plucky melodic sounds but feel free to use them, abuse them, and tweak them in every which way because super versatile. A lot of these sounds are super versatile, versatile and super tweakable. So yeah, have fun with that. One final little Easter egg there, if you even heard it. I've heard this in a few of his tracks, right? You hear this in a ton of bass music tracks, a ton of like, I don't know, electronic tracks even. Wheel up signal sound effect, right? And it's just a classic sound effect from like some old drum and bass pack, I'm pretty sure, right? And this is actually in, I have like a recycled DNB pack on my website. It's just a bunch of sample packs I found and put together into one big pack. It's in there, right? Along with like some other classic samples. If you wanna do some throwbacks in there. Yeah, just threw that in at the end and put a fade on it. Yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, but really, that's everything. Not the, not a crazy thing. Okay, whatever that means, but yeah, thanks for watching. Oh shit, there's actually one more thing. Don't leave yet. I heard this in one of his tracks, so I had to cover it. And I fucked it up, right? Basically, a sine wave, pitch bend, saturator with hiss. Except what I meant to do before I messed it up and it disappeared is group this, right? This is how to make it really flutter. Group this, right? Instrument rack. Control D, duplicate this, okay? And now you have two of the same thing. And you, you only want one with the hiss, okay? 
And what we're going to do to give it some real flutter action, auto pan on the one with the hiss, amount up, phase down. You hear, you can make this automated to really have like a shaking flutter, right? Except you only want the sub bass on one of them. So I'm going to go and EQ out the sub. So basically we have this hiss, right? We have this hiss but it's only playing on one layer, which is, has no sub bass, so it's just the hiss. You can also mess with the amount. Yeah, I just heard that in one of his tracks and decided to throw it in there. Yeah, that's how you make that kind of flutter hiss that I'm sure you're dying to know. Yeah, but that's that. Yeah, this project file and presets all in this video are available on the Patreon, plus you get all these other, all my other video presets and project files and all that, right? But yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Buntingmusic.com for all the deals, all the free samples and shit like that. Right? Shout out Joe, my rat. Let me find the rat. Shout out my rat. He's without without him, I wouldn't be a sound design wizard that I am. Right? But what else? Like the video if you liked. Subscribe if you want to see more of this. Leave a comment if you have any future suggestions for videos or have any questions about this video. And yeah, just check out the description. There's a ton of links in there. And yeah, man, I'm happy to educate and help you. You guys make it all possible. Thank you for your support. Joe thanks you as well. He says thanks. He's very nice. He has huge nuts. Jesus Christ, those are huge, right? But that's that. I'm done talking. Peace out, guys. Love you.